I'm slowing down in this area. I'm gonna definitely look around for more of these bad boys. And this is the coral tooth. Heresium coralloides. Could be confused with oyster mushrooms, but a bunch of angry bees. So good thing I didn't step in that. I've done it before and it sucks. Wow. What a huge mushroom. Woo, look at that. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Aaron Hilliard from Mushroom Wonderland. Today I'm gonna hike on a section of the Pacific Crest Trail in Washington State and see what kind of wild mushrooms are growing up in the mountains right now. So come with me into the woods and thanks for joining this episode of Mushroom Wonderland. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. There's a bit of moisture up here, so that's a good sign. The ground's got some definite dampness to it. Mushrooms like moisture. Right down here, I see a mushroom popping out. Right here, look at this beauty. This thing from the bottom, look at that, Rusula. This one, a beautiful Rusula. A good way to test that ability of this would be to nibble a little bit of the cap and that would be able to help you determine if it was really spicy or not. A very spicy one would be inedible and, uh, and if it's not spicy, then it's a safe one to eat. That only works with this genus, Rusula. So not Amanitas and stuff, they're all mild flavored. But a beautiful uh, rusula here. These, uh, the stem will break clean like chalk. It won't strip apart. So, pretty common mushrooms. Mycorrhizal mushrooms grow in association with trees around here. What do we got growing down here? So these mushrooms right here are really interesting, and you can find these growing on conifer. They're not that common and they could be confused with oyster mushrooms but these ones are known as pleurocybella porogens the angel wing and so even though these are said to be just as edible as oyster mushrooms um, people are kind of scared of them because in 2004 a uh, nursing home in japan fed this to a lot of their patients and they died a lot of them died i don't know the exact number right now but and there's been no other poisonings ever reported from this mushroom except for in that incident. Now those people were all on dialysis and uh, they were kidney compromised, but still it's enough to kind of scare me off. Not really a big fan of uh, risking my life so much for a log loving mushroom, but um, they do look a bit like Pleurotus. They're a little bit tough and they really don't have any kind of stipe. It's just gills go all the way down and they're a little tougher than I might've thought. You know, and it's kind of fun sometimes, hit it with the UV light. And, uh, eh, not too super fluorescent, a little bit. Might be really cool at night, I bet. Anyways, let's keep moving. There's all kinds of mushrooms out here. This is so exciting. If I look right over here, looks like it's growing off of the log over here. What do we got here? Ooh, look at the stipe on this guy. Hold on, pull this out of here. Wowzers, look at that. Is that beautiful or what? Stropharia ambigua. This one, man, look at that dark spore print and then see the dark spores all over the annulus. That could look a bit like a Psilocybe cubensis, right? Stropharia ambigua, look at this flaco stipe. That's really pretty. And then it's got this, uh, all these little appendiculate uh, pieces of margin, or of a veil attached to the margin. Dark purple brown spore print. Beautiful mushroom, saprotrophic, growing here in, uh, in September in the mountains. I think they're just super photogenic, beautiful. And yeah, these are edible, um, but not really desired. This one's really mature, but Beautiful specimen. I 
Right now I'm just a little over 3,000 feet. And um, although it's crunchy and dry still down at the lowlands, there's a lot of moisture up here and it's really cool. So, you know, not a far drive from Seattle to get up to the mountains and uh, do some great mushroom foraging. So look at this, I just stopped on the side of the trail and plucked this one out. This appears to be some kind of a bright yellow Amanita related to Amanita muscaria, the red one with the white spots. This one got that real obvious annulus. Really cool Amanita. Definitely gonna take this for a little more study. So this is what this section of the Pacific Crest Trail looks like. This trail goes all the way from Mexico to Canada. Uh, this is just a very small little sliver of it that I'm showing you here today. But this one runs through the Cascades of Central Washington. Um, basically runs all the way down the Cascade Range through the Sierra Nevada, down through California and to Mexico. So there's people on this trail that are doing the long trek, probably finishing up somewhere pretty soon because winter is not far off and it won't be long before this area is just buried in snow feet and feet and feet of snow and I've snowshoed on this section before and it can be a little bit treacherous One of my main hopes in coming up here is to maybe find some porcini, some Boletus edulis of one variety or another. Hoping to see a porcini popping out somewhere around here. Fingers crossed. As I'm coming up the trail, I see something white on the end of this log. And I'm hoping this could be a Heresian species. A coral tooth. Let's see, oh yeah, baby. How beautiful is that? Cool, so this one, Heresium, or the uh, bear tooth fungus. There's a secondary one down there that's a little bit older. But look at the way that that is structured. So it's just waterfalls of little teeth. Beautiful, beautiful mushroom. And these are extremely good edibles. Growing on a log like that, it's fairly soft. Gorgeous mushroom, so. I'm gonna check the other end of this log as well because sometimes they'll be popping out of both ends. Oh my goodness, did I call that or what? Look at that. This one's known as Heresium abietus, uh, the bear's head. Some people call it the bear's head tooth and I, I don't like that either. I guess it's the bear's head toothed fungi if you wanna say it like that. But I, I think bear's head is enough to label this mushroom. Uh, we have a lion's mane and a bear's head, I think that sounds awesome. You know, bear's head tooth? I don't know, man. Anyways, the Heresium abietus, uh, beautiful uh, edible mushroom. These can be kind of confused from one another, the Coraloides, the Beatus, the uh, Arenaceus. Um, they're all edible though, so that's the good news here. So I'm gonna take this mesh foraging bag that I have, this way it kind of can help drop spores along the way, let the mushroom breathe. You don't want to put it in a plastic bag because it'll just um, start to sweat and get mushy and smushed. So the easy way to harvest one of these bad boys is to just gently grab it and just kind of How nice is that? Oh, it feels so soft and beautiful. What a cool mushroom, one of my favorites to find for sure. I'm gonna go around to the other side and get this one too. Don't worry, these have already let off just billions of spores into this forest that's covered in dead logs. It has definitely got its spores out and will continue to. It's not doing any harm to harvest these. They probably like it. 
What a pretty mushroom. Awesome. Let's keep on hiking. Starting to feel a few raindrops. And that can happen up here in the mountains, especially in you know, early fall. This weather changes quickly. Trail is starting to get a bit more rocky here, and I think it's going to open up into these kind of meadowy hillsides. Looking a little like Switzerland or something up here. Alpine Lakes Wilderness, Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest. So honestly, as beautiful as this is, I'm starting to think that I uh, turn around and just go forage around down by the uh, parking lot. My plan today was to come mushroom foraging, not necessarily do a big, huge hike. I'm a couple miles in right now and it's beautiful, but mushroom habitat is kind of behind us, I feel like. I could keep going, but it's very rocky here and out in the wide open, not really good habitat for mushrooms. So I think I'm gonna head back down the trail toward the parking lot and just forage around, see what kind of mushrooms are growing. It's where there's more needle duff and trees than there is here. So I like to be deeper in the forest for mushroom habitat. So I think I'm gonna head back down now. Down here, I see this kind of bright orange color coming off of this log here. Look at that. These are what are commonly called the false chanterelle. So, Hygrophoropsis. I guess some people confuse it with a chanterelle because of those decurrent gills, the color. Uh, it's kind of orange, you know, it gets kind of sherbet colored toward the outside. But these are edible and okay to eat much smaller than our Pacific Northwest chanterelles and uh, they've got this really bright orange color but these are true gills they're not veins like on a chanterelle so there you go there's one to know but you know nothing to be too concerned about they're not toxic so you'd be okay if you ate some of them. Hygrophoropsis or Antiaca there's your false chanterelles Right here next to the trail, these kind of grayish, cloudy, capped looking mushrooms. And if you flip it over, it's got these like decurrent gills, sort of an enrolled margin. Um, due to this little speckling discoloration and the fact that they're pretty viscid when they're wet, um, Clytosabe, uh, Clytosabe ribulosa or something around there, these, they contain muscarin, which can uh, really be uh, rough on your gastrointestinal system as well as uh, can cause you some sweating and tearing and things like that. These mushrooms best to be left avoided. They look an awful lot like a sweetbread mushroom uh, that people pick and eat but uh, be careful of the Clytosabe. The genus of mushroom you probably would be better off avoiding especially these ones are said to be pretty poisonous. So. I see a couple of mushrooms right here on the side of the trail. This, this LBM, oh look at how cool that is. That is cool. Very beautiful, wow. So I'm gonna have to study up on this one a little bit. Beautiful little pore surface, gorgeous. So I'm sitting there looking at these really cool little bolites and I look right over here and would you know it, there is a porcini, a Boletus edulis. <gasps> How gorgeous is that? Oh my gosh, that's what I came for, baby. I'm slowing down in this area. I'm gonna definitely look around for more of these bad boys. 
So this is a mycorrhizal mushroom growing with uh, some of the uh, trees around here. It uh, helps the tree and the tree helps it. And uh, I'm telling you, they are just the most delicious mushrooms. And when you can find them really young, they don't have bugs in them yet. Score, super duper score. And uh, I'm definitely collecting this and gonna hopefully find a, a bigger one. You got that reticulation on the stipe, that very bulbous base, that pore surface underneath. It's absolutely gorgeous. And, uh, we're gonna get this guy. I'm gonna set the cap aside and get this. Look at that, look at the mycelium, it's like this bright gold color, how pretty. So cool. But how cool, I stopped to look at these little guys and ended up seeing the porcini. Now I know I'm right in the right area. We got a little ways off the beaten path. As I look right down here. <laughs> yeah baby. Oh, Porcini, the big Bolita sedulus. Look at that. Dang, now, the other one was really little. This one's really big. I want to find one somewhere in between. This one's undoubtedly full of bugs and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but here's a huge Bolita sedulus. Big one growing up here in the woods right now. This is what that little baby is going to look like when it grows up. <laughs> this is when Gunner is in his element, dude. One thing you can do is get on these riverbeds, kind of look underneath the brush and look for mushrooms. We're going to walk along down this creek bed a little ways, though. Dude, I see some. Check this out. Look at those. Porcini, baby. They were growing right here. It looks like it snapped off because of all the bug decay. Man, just missed it. How pretty are those guys, though? You can see that reticulated stem. It kind of kind of fades away as they get a little bit older, but unmistakable. Look at that. How beautiful. These guys would be good for the drying. People make porcini powder, so I'll probably still collect them. Even though no doubt they've got some worms in them. Oh, nice. So I'm checking out these mushrooms. And I look over and look what Gunner stirred up. Dang, he really pissed them off. Yellow jackets, that's what we have in the ground around here in, in the Pacific Northwest. I'm not getting stung currently, so here I am, handful of porcini. A dog in pain and just right there, a bunch of angry bees. So good thing I didn't step in that. I've done it before and it sucks. Look at them all. Woo. Yeah, we're gonna avoid right there. Crazy. There's one angry bee's nest. spot on the side of this log over here oh let's go check it out let's check out what I just came across <laughs> this is right here on the log another coralloides what do we got under here we got some kind of a mushroom growing out of this underneath this log and that is a porcini it's all squished under there but look at that heresium Growing right next to this Ganoderma applinatum. This is the artist conch. And this is the coral tooth. Heresium coralloides. Pretty sure. Could be wrong. This might be another bear's head. I have a hard time telling those two apart, but gorgeous. Another heresium. And another Boletus. This one a little bit dirty and whatnot. <laughs> but I don't think it has bugs in it, but look right behind me. Look at that guy. Perfect. 
What an awesome day out here. So, score of scores. Look at that. What a cool little trio we got going here. I'm gonna pose those up for a little photo. Pretty nice. All right. Oh, look at it, it's like rubbery. Kind of hard to pull off of that log, but gorgeous. Into the bag. And we're really scoring today. Poor gun. Glad you're not allergic, boy. You're not having fun with the bees, though. Oh my gosh, look what Gunner just found. That's a beast. Wow. What a huge mushroom. Boletus edulis, Gran edulis. Really mushy with bugs. Gonna leave that behind for sure. I mean, it's just full of worms. You could powder with these, but I just feel like there's so many out here. I'm not gonna take that big old ugly guy. We better be careful, Gunner. Don't wanna step on no more bees' nests. Well, we came across right here. that cantharellus roseo canis or the uh, rainbow chanterelles look at how bright those gills are absolutely gorgeous growing right here with the porcini and the heresium man it is a treasure trove for mushroom hunters out here right now nice little vein of these mushrooms the roseo canis oh my gosh look at them bright gills how beautiful we don't find these right down inland where i reside awesome Look at how bright the gills are. So different than a regular Cantharellus formosus. Really exciting find for me. Definitely going to make an observation, get some good photos of these. Wow, what a cool day. What a great day out here, huh, Gunner? And finding all of these gorgeous, amazing edible mushrooms. That was such a great idea to uh, drive up to the mountains today <laughs> on a Monday and just go traipsing around in the woods because I'm telling you, man, I'm having the best day foraging I've had in a long time. Right in here in this hole, look at that growing off the wall. That's a young porcini, young Boleta sedulis growing down in this little cavern thing. They're kind of all over around here. So I'm so glad that I took this day to head up to the mountains. I'm getting tired of the dry lowlands and it proved to be just like an amazing hike today and a lot of awesome, amazing edible mushrooms. All of the heresium, the bear's head, we got rainbow chanterelles, porcini, so cool. I was not really expecting to get that lucky, but uh, you know, the mushroom gods just kind of smile on me sometimes. So I'm trying to spread the love through education and I hope that you hit that subscribe button and maybe follow me on the other platforms. And until the next video, much love everybody. We got a lot coming out this autumn, so stay tuned and uh, make sure to hit that notification bell. Much love, peace out.